14.4. What page is this on? This is page what? Page 570, either 8 or 9. All right, so I'm not going to worry about the, um, the example they give us here. You guys are welcome to look that over if you want. I'm not worried about the convince me. I'm just going to put a, a cross through that. And let's just jump into the uh, guided practice and take a look at these. So it says, Tanya marked a grid in her garden and she planted a rose bush at 3-1. Okay, that's some important information. She moved two feet east and take a look here. Two feet east and one foot north. Well, which way is east? Well, they tell you right there. Which way is north? They tell you right there. So another way to look at this is um, I could put down let's say east comma north put those in parentheses and I could put X above the east and Y above the north and that should help you out there so then it says she moved two feet east and one foot north and planted a second rose bush she continued planting rose bushes so that each bush was two feet east and one foot north of the previous bush. So it says, how can a coordinate grid help you reason about the problem? I'm not sure what answer they're looking for, but if you were to make a grid as, as they've done for us here, um, I would say it gives you a visual aid in the layout. In other words, you could look and see on a piece of paper what it's going to look like. I mean, so I'm just, you know, you know, for example, let's say the rose bushes look like this. And if this is a representation of her garden, then she'll have an idea where the rose bushes will end up. So answer number one for you. Number two, it says draw and label the locations of the first four bushes. Draw and label the locations of the first four bushes on the grid. So you need to do that. Remember the first one is at 3-1. I'll go ahead and mark that. 3-1. Um, Looks like it would be right there. And so remember what I said earlier, whenever possible, label each of the points. And I'm just going to put three comma one. And uh, draw and label the locations of the first four bushes. And then it asks you a question. Do, do uh, Tanya's bushes lie in a straight line? How do you know? Well, if they do lie in a straight line, and you mark it on the grid correctly, you could see it. And so that's how you would answer that question. If they're not in a straight line, again, you could see it. So I'll let you guys go ahead and mark them all, and then you can tell me, or you know, in, in response to your homework, whether they're in a straight line or not. And then <clears throat> the next question is says, what are the locations of the fifth and ninth? rose bushes so I'm just gonna put down the fifth and I'm gonna put some parentheses comma parentheses and ninth parentheses comma parentheses so you're going to have to and I'm gonna use a word here extrapolate which means, what does that mean exactly? It means um, predicting with the information that you have <clears throat> what the fifth and ninth would be. Now remember, you're doing the, the first four right here. Well, imagine where the fifth one would be. And that answer is going to go right there. And then you're going to have to go from the 5th to the 6th to the 7th to the 8th, but then they want to know what the ninth is, so you'll have to do that. 
and we'll make that answer, they'll have to get both correct, a stick. And must just jar. Okay. Let's go down to the independent practice. It says a marching band uses a grid to determine the members' positions. And it says one starts at 2-2. Two, two. All right, so I'm going to mark 2-2. Two, two. There's 2 and there's 2. And I'm going to write that down. 2, comma, 2. And then um, it says every 15 seconds... He moves four yards east and three yards north. Well, again, here's east and here's north. And so, um, so for the next 15 seconds, he goes east four and north three. And then it asks you the question, um, how can you model this problem? How can you model it? By labeling each of the positions on the grid. There you go. By labeling each of the positions on the grid. Forgive the sloppy writing. Number five, it says draw and label the locations of Juan's first four positions. Well, that's very similar to the one we just did because they wanted you to label the first four rose bushes. So draw and label the locations of the first four positions. Do the points form a pattern? Answer that question. How can you tell? Well, again, just like I said a couple minutes ago, if you're doing a visual representation of his positions, let's say it's like this, when we're done, let's say it looks like this. Is that a pattern? No. no. No, that's not a pattern. What if they look like this? Is that a pattern? Yes. Yeah, of course. It's in a line, so that would be a pattern. It would be linear. All right, so answer those questions. Do the points form a pattern, yes or no? How can you tell? And again, you can tell just by looking at the grid when you're done labeling them. And the number six, it says, what will Juan's location be after 60 seconds? After 90 seconds? Well, wait a second. How, how quickly is he moving? We're, we're, we're drawing a position every what? 15 seconds. 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 equals what? That's 60. So at 60 seconds, that's going to be four positions. But then you need to add another 30 seconds, which would be two more 15s for uh, 90 seconds. So keep track of that. Be thinking about that. All right. Let's Look at the problem solving. A toy company is testing Rozo Robot. Rozo is 18 inches tall, weighs 2 pounds. The employees of the company mark the grid on the floor and set Rozo at 2.5. All right, I'm going to go to 2.5. Oh, now here we have a grid and they didn't mark it for us. Um, they programmed Rozo to walk 3 yards east and four yards north. Well, I'm going to make it easy here. I'm just going to do the same kind of grids that we've already done, east and north. And remember, I would do, so here's east, I'll just put an E, comma, north. And, and the E is what? the x value and the north is the y value so I can mark 2 5 2 um, well let's see I suppose let's 
It's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes when you create a grid, you might not be too sure if each number should be one or two or the value of of the grid. Let me pull this over here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to just bring it over here. I'm going to make it a lot bigger. And I'm not going to do it for you guys, but I just want to explain something really quick. So I might make these values, look up here now, I might make it one, two, three, four, five. And so this would be one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. What if every time he moves, he's moving like, I don't know, five or 10 feet? Would going in increments of one be a good idea? No, no probably not. So then it would make more sense to maybe go by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so forth. Do you see what I'm saying? And so sometimes you really can't tell until you start doing your grid. It just, uh, it's, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. So um, let's just look at this for a moment here. And let's see, um, the employees, okay, he starts at 2-5 and then programmed Rozo to walk three yards east and four yards north each minute. What will his location be after seven minutes? Hmm. Well, so each minute, let's mark this. Um, he's starting at 2-5, so let's go by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so forth. This would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Each line is 2. And where does he start? Two, five. Two, and then five. So five would be right between the, um, the four and the six. That would be five. And then again, they tell us that he's going to be going. Um, they programmed him to walk three yards east and four yards north each minute. What will his location be? after seven minutes so i'm going to let you guys figure that out and um whatever that answer is you'll put it right here something comma something all right um i want you to answer this question do you need all of the information given to solve the problem? Okay. And it says, describe any information that's not needed. So the inf if there's some information we don't need, tell me what it is. Write it in here. I know they don't give you much room. Number eight, label and graph and uh, plot Rozo's starting position, then plot and label um, his position at the end of each of the first four minutes. End of each of the first four minutes. Okay, so you're going to do um, one minute, two minutes, and you're going to mark that, three minutes, and then four minutes because they want to know the first four minutes. So you can answer that question. Uh, what tool would you choose for drawing a line segment? Yeah, that's lame. A ruler, some kind of straight edge. So cross out nine. Describe the relationships between the coordinates of the points that represent his locations. 
uh, I, I'm not quite sure what they're looking for, but I mean, let's think about it and not make it harder than it is. Um, for every three um, yards east, he goes, um, what is it, four yards north. Ratio of three to four. And then number 11, they ask the question, uh, what will his location be after seven minutes? So again, you're going to have to, there's that college word again, extrapolate where he will be after seven minutes. And I'll tell you right now, I'm, I don't think this graph is going to be big enough no. for you to figure that out. You're going to have to kind of mentally do it. Okay? And what's that? That's the question in the Rosa robot. Oh, is that the same? Yeah, you know what? They do this once in a while. What will it be? Oh, you're right. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Put up 100 points. Just, just crossed out number 11 because as Miss Maldonado just pointed out, um, that's the very same question they're asking right here. Where will he be after seven minutes? Same question. Okay. All right. That's it. Stop. Video.